let's let it rise. Oh, let's let it rise. That's right. Let the, the glory of the, the Lord, Lord rise among us. us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. Let's let it rise. Let's let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord Amen. rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Amen. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. That's right. Oh. Let's let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. let's let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Amen. Let the glory of the Lord among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let's let it rise. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David dance, I will dance like David dance, like David dance, like David, David dance, I will dance like David dance, like David dance, like David dance. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will sing. Like David sang, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. I will sing like David sing, like David sing, like David David sang. I will sing like David sing, 
like David, sing like David, sing. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will clap like David clap. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will clap like David clap. Oh, I will clap like David clap. David clap like David. David clap. I will clap like David clap. Like David clap. Like David clap. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will shout like David shouts. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will shout like David shouts. I will shout like David shouts. Like David shout, like David, David shout. I will shout, like David shout, like David shout, like David shout. So when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will praise, like David praise. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will praise like David praised. I will praise like David, praise like David, praise like David. David praised, I will praise like David, praise like David, praise like David praised. I have a God who with his angels watches over me. I have a God who puts my enemies beneath my feet. I have a God for when I'm sick and when I'm feeling well. I have a God. I have a God. And my God cannot fail. I have a God. I have a God who with his angels watches over me, I have a God who puts my enemies beneath my feet. I have a God for when I'm sick and when I'm feeling well. I have a God, I have a God, and my God cannot fail. I have a God. One more time. I have a God who with his angels watches over me. I have a God who puts my enemies Beneath my feet I have a God for when I'm sick and when I'm feeling well. I have a God, I have a God, and my God cannot fail. I have a God. Come let us sing, let us rejoice. Come let us sing, let us rejoice. Messiah's come, that's right. And he brought life, and he put laughter into my soul. Come, let us sing, let us rejoice. Come, let us sing, let us rejoice. Messiah's come, and he brought life, and he put laughter into my soul. Come, let us sing. Let us rejoice, come let us sing, let us rejoice. Messiah's come, and he brought life, and he put laughter into my soul. I have a God who with his angels watches over me. I have a God who puts my enemies Beneath my feet I have a God for when I'm sick and when I'm feeling well. I have a God, I have a God, and my God cannot fail. I have a God. I have a God who with his angels watches over me. I have a God who puts my enemies beneath my feet. I have a God for when I'm sick and when I'm 
feeling well, I have a God, I have a God in my God, cannot pay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. What a, what a tremendous, tremendous statement. There is no one else like you. No one ever will. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Tonight, as we pray, let's again remember that, that we are not just talking to somebody that has to go to a committee and find out if this is something we can do. We know that we can enter into the gates we can enter into the throne room of grace, and we can have confidence in Jesus' name. A um, couple of requests. I know um, uh, uh, Kevin Morris is sick tonight. Um, there's a family, the Bailey family. They asked me today at a Bible study to pray for them, and uh, just lots of other things. We're living in a time when, when God can just show himself so bright in Jesus' name. If you have some needs tonight, why don't you go ahead and just signify that by lifting your hands, and then I just encourage you to present those needs to God. That's what we do. We're not afraid to tell him what's going on because he knows in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, right here tonight, strengthen everyone that is here, Lord God. Let no one be the same because, Lord God, of what you represent in Jesus' name. Strengthen us here tonight, Lord God. I pray for 
these that are sick that can't make it. Lord God, I pray that you would touch them even where they're at in Jesus' name. And I, Lord God, expect that to happen. That is happening right now, right now as we speak. The spirit dimension, Lord God, is so, so efficient in Jesus' name, and it can do it so much faster. Lord God, touch, strengthen, Lord God. I push back the darkness. I come against doubt and unbelief, Lord God, that would try to, try to put holes in our faith right now. And, Lord God, I command them to go back in Jesus' name. And, Lord God, that your word is having free course. Oh, yes, your word is having free course in this place here tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. What an exciting time to believe in God. Yes, that's it. Come on, we got a few minutes. We can present those, uh, those needs to the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I feel the faith is rising in this place. Hallelujah. What a tremendous thing. What a time. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, Lord God. Move upon us, Lord Jesus. Move upon us, Lord God, freely. Let us be used here for a few minutes, Lord God, to minister to this world that is in darkness, Lord God, but they can walk in the light in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, Lord God. The light is shining. The darkness has to go. Unbelief, Lord God, and doubt has to go along with, with, with blindness in Jesus' name. The doctrines of Christ are easily seen, Lord God. Your perspective, Lord God, is easily seen in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Lord God, in advance. I give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. What do you say? We just lift him up together. Well, can we do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can be seated. Thank you so much for, um, for joining us tonight and in joining in what, we're, what the Lord would have us to do in Jesus' name. As you can already see, uh, the person who was supposed to put on our creation seminar is not here and um, called me and they're broke down in Arizona. Um, he told me this is the first time that uh, that's ever happened in the 24 years of ministry. So we are a first. We got stood up at first. We're at no. But he, he apologized, sends his apologies. We will try to rearrange that down the road somewhere because I do feel like that's an important subject. And so hopefully when he can set up some things um, up here again, you know, we're not the only church he was going to be involved in, so that's going to take a little bit of planning. So tonight what we're going to do is we'll continue on with the discipleship project. How many is being blessed by this type of a Bible study? Is it something that's helping you? I, I hope so because that's why we're doing it. We choose things, you know, try to plan things ahead, and we choose these things because we feel like it's not only what we need, but it's something that we can, we can do here in Jesus' name. The, the subject that we're talking about here tonight, um, or I should say the, for the next four weeks, is going to be talking about the imitation of Christ, and that's what we want to do, isn't it? Um, if you think about it, and you've heard me say this many times, that that's the essence of Christianity. The essence of Christianity is to be a follower and a worshiper of Jesus Christ. And so last week we talked about his mission, our mission, right? Can anybody remember what the central scripture was? Remember? Don't look. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a clue. It was in Luke. Luke chapter 19. You remember what it said? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Remember that? Try to memorize that because that's part, that's, that is a very, very important part of our mission. You know, to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. And so... Um, if you're like me, I didn't even know I was. 
And so this is neat the way God brings it out. Tonight we're going to talk about um, the aspect of um, um, his role, our role. And now all of us, I think, can think of someone in our lives, maybe someone in, in, um, uh, in your family, that type of thing, who was a, um, a tremendous role model. And role models, in my opinion, are, are needed today. And, of course, we've got one with Jesus Christ. And so tonight as we examine the scriptures and the things that we're going to try to put together here tonight, keep that in mind. We want to become a role model. And the best way that we could become a role model is, again, to an imitate Jesus Christ. That's our goal. Amen. Let me show you something at the beginning of this. And it's found in Romans chapter number 8. I bring this out from time to time because I feel like it's important for us to realize what the goal here is. is. What, what's God's goal for us being down here? My rendition of this was as soon as we get the Holy Ghost, just take us to heaven. But that didn't work. God didn't fall for that one. And so I had to come up with it, uh, or help. He had to help me to, to understand that there's more to it. Um, the Scripture says in Romans 8 and 28, you, most of you know this, it says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Purpose there. The word purpose there in the Greek literally means his intention. What is God's intention here? His intention is for us to understand that all things together will work good. Amen. Unfortunately, that's not for everybody in the world. That's for people who love God and are called according to his purpose. Praise God. And so this is what we want to be done. This is where we want to stay. But notice verse 29. The scripture says there in, in Romans 8 and 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Predestination is, is a doctrine that became very popular under certain uh, religious organizations. And um, and in their concept of it, it's false doctrine. But you've got to understand the predestination of God's plan isn't. God has always had a plan, always knew what he was doing, always does. Amen. Now, people have to make up their minds that they're going to be part of God's plan. Amen. That part is not predestinated. And that's what gives us hope. Amen. There are not people that are born to this world that are destined to go to hell. I don't know if you realize this or not, but there are religious organizations out there that actually believe that. They believe that. It doesn't make any difference who you are. You're born to go to certain places. That is not true. The plan of God saving everybody is what is predestinated. Amen. There's nothing going to stop that. But that's not, where it, that's not where it stops. The plan of God is there. But look at what it says there. To be conformed to the image of his son that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. The word conform there kind of gives you the idea, if you study the word, of a press, something pressing something out. My little grandson down in Colorado has clay. And every time he gets it out, you know he's going to create a mess. But what he does is he's got toys that he can put this clay in, and then he can, he can form certain things. And the clay does that. That's what it does. Sometimes it gets hard, and they've got to throw it away, and they've got to get him some new clay. But nevertheless, it always reminds me of this. That's what God is doing. He's pressing us. And I know sometimes that can be uncomfortable. But you've got to realize what he's doing. He's trying to get us to be conformed to his image. And what is that image? That image is very simple. It's the image of Jesus Christ. That's why you and I, we become imitators of him. Amen. His mission, our mission. Tonight, we want to understand his role. What is his role? What did he do? What kind of a role model did Jesus give us? Well, I think you and I can get involved in that. Can you say amen? And so hopefully this will help you. At the beginning, and I'm just going to trust you all have your books and your papers and that type of thing, the scripture's focus tonight, first one is found in, 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 um, in Mark chapter number 10 and verse 45, and it comes on um, in, in, in context with there were a couple of, uh, there was a mother that said, I want you to put one of my kids on one side of the un and, and, um, and on the other side. Now, we won't read that. And, um, of course, she had the wrong idea because Jesus said, listen, that's not mine to give. You know, the Heavenly Father will take care of that. He's already preparing that, by the way. But what Jesus wanted to clarify is in verse number 45, Mark 10 and 45. You can see it up in the screen. He simply says, for even the Son of Man, and you've got to understand, that's what Jesus is referred to there. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, 
but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In my opinion, this is the maturity that really, really needs to take place in the apostolic church. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be ministered to. If you were here tonight and you gave yourself to God, he was ministering to us just a few minutes ago. Now, if you didn't get ministered to, it's not God's fault. It's yours. I, I'm not finding fault. I'm just telling you that. God ministers to us all the time. Amen. But one thing that we forget sometimes is that's not where it stops. And you'd be surprised how many churches that's all they do. They just want to come to church so that God can do for them. And I'm not saying that God won't. I'm just saying, but if that's all you've got in life, no wonder you have a kind of a, what I would consider a stunted growth. And this is the role model that Jesus wants to give us, that he gives us the ability to minister to others. And once you get involved or get actively involved in that type of a process, you begin to see so many things. I can't tell you how many times I've been ministering to people that God began to minister to me through that, 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 um, that process. Amen. And I'm leading, it leads me to believe that if I wouldn't have got involved in ministry, that I probably wouldn't have gotten ministered to a certain degree. So consider that. That's not a slam. That's not a put down. That's something that we need to consider, praise God, because if we want to follow his role model. We're going to have to learn to do things his way. Another scripture that we're going to find, and boy, I forgot that. I guess I can control this, can I? I can control this. Oh, if I can turn it on. Ah, there it is. Praise God. This is cool. I like this device. Amen. There it is. Philippians 2. And we're going to refer back to these two scriptures here um, uh, later on. But this one here, again, helps us to understand what's this all about well the scripture says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the word actually means mindset it means to think like Jesus thought okay who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God what a statement it says but made himself of no reputation there's one of those areas that we struggle with amen and took upon him the form of a servant there's the role model that Jesus gives us Amen. And was made in the likeness of man. That's why Jesus is referred to in a lot of these scriptures as the Son of Man. That was the man, Christ Jesus, that conformed himself to Almighty God's way. That's not another God. That's a human being just like you and I who had a will, had choices to make, and Jesus made the right choices. That's why we can imitate him. Can you say amen? And so this is what's very, 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 very important, praise God. And so Jesus demonstrated this in many, many, many different ways. Sir, do you got a piece of paper? You came in late. I saw that. Does anybody got another one of those copies that he can have? Would you, would you mind? Would you, do we have one left? Okay, we'll get you one. Get you one. You come to this church, we give you things to do, okay? All right, glad that you're here. I'm glad that you came, praise God. Um, the, the Gospel of John is unique in, in, the, in the idea that there's different time frames, and it's not like a lengthy time frame. You know, you get to the 11th chapter of the book of, um, of John, and this is where Lazarus is raised from the dead. This is just a couple of weeks probably from his crucifixion, okay? And so the, the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 chapters of the book of John are very, very short time very short time period. Well, Jesus, and this is why I appreciate the Gospel of John, and I appreciate all the Gospels, but in the Gospel of John, um, John mentions something that is not in the other Gospels, and that is what Jesus did, one of the last things he did with his disciples. Does anybody remember what it was? Remember something called the Last Supper? Okay, what was one of the things that Jesus did at the Last Supper? Yes, you talk about, you know, um, uh, a word picture here, you know. I mean, we get, the, um, we get the, the message, we get the message, praise God, in, in, in Mark chapter number 10, where the Son of Man didn't come to be ministered to, he came to minister. Well, you get the word picture there in the 13th chapter of the book of, of John where he knelt down in front of them, he girded himself with a towel, and he basically washed their feet. Do you remember somebody that had a little problem with that? Yeah, 
Yeah, I imagine some of the other disciples felt a little uncomfortable too, but, you know, a lot of those guys are like we are sometimes. They just don't say what they really are thinking. But Peter's one of those guys that does, doesn't he? He's not afraid to say what he thinks, praise God. And so the thing of it is, he, he, began, to, he began to say, Lord, <laughs> this isn't the way it's supposed to work here, you know? Well, but we understand that Jesus, again, being our role model, was teaching us. Now, I understand the art of, of um, washing people's feet, especially back then, was something that was a common thing. If you went into somebody's home, especially if they had a servant, that was one of the things that they did right off the bat because the streets were dirty, they had sandals on, and so there was kind of a necessity for that. That was one of the things that they would do. Well, Jesus, again, was demonstrating this, that I'm taking upon the form of a servant, praise God. And if you remember what he said, let me just remind you of what he said here. I don't know if it's on the screen or not. No, it isn't. Um, but um, if, if, if um, I'm going to back up. There it is. But let me just tell you, in John chapter 13, verses 14 and 15, you just might want to write that down. Write that down. Jesus said, if I then, your Lord and Master, and how many believe that Jesus is Lord and Master? So do I. There's no doubt in my mind. He is the Lord and Master. And so Jesus is saying, if I am he, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. You see what Jesus is saying? Come on, let's become a role model for Jesus Christ. Amen. For I have given you, given you, is what he said here, an example that you should do as I have done to you. See, that's what Jesus was doing. He was showing us the way to do it. He wasn't just somebody that spoke words. He demonstrated things. That's why I would have loved to sat under Jesus Christ. If you could tell me I could transport into time, um, there's no doubt about it. I, uh, th that choice would be I'd love to bend at the feet of Jesus. I'd love to follow him around and just saw how he did it, praise God. Amen. Now, I understand we got the scriptures, so we can, we can learn a lot from that. But it would have been just absolutely special just to see him, just to see him in action, praise God. What an impression that will make. Well, listen, we can't do that. God doesn't give us a time machine. But we can read the scriptures, and then something else can happen. You and I can become those role models. See, that's what people, in my opinion, in this world today, they don't need another CNN critic. They don't need another Fox News commentator. What they need is somebody who knows Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ making an effect in their life, praise God, and then them without any kind of a motive, without any kind of an agenda, just going out into this world, praise God, and doing what Jesus Christ has done. Can somebody feel the Holy Ghost like I'm feeling it right now? I'm telling you, the anointing of the Lord is in this place to help that to happen to us. This is one of our greatest privileges is that you and I can become like him. Amen. And so this is what we do. That's why this Bible study, in my, in my opinion, is very, very important. Now, you don't have to answer this question, but let me ask it. What are some of the roles that you, full, that you fill in a daily? Huh? Think about that. What are some of the roles that you fill? Maybe you're a parent here and you got children. Yeah, you're, you're fulfilling a role in front of them. You're a role model. Maybe somebody at work is being trained under you right now. See, there's lots of opportunity for us to do that, praise God. And I believe the Lord can help us to say. And really, what does that say about the person, what they're doing? It says a lot, doesn't it? You ever heard the old cliche that actions? What's the rest of it? Yeah. You know that, don't you? Amen. There's been lots of people, and we've probably been guilty of it from time to time, that we've said certain things. And then we got that little ace in the hole where we say, well, just do what I say and not what I do. Well, that one don't cut it very much, you know. And so you and I, we can, we can begin to shore up those areas of our life and thank God for his help, praise God. Can somebody say amen? Aren't you glad that you and I serve God who's long-suffering, who doesn't let two or three mistakes that we make become the end of the thing, that he says, come on, you can get back up and you can do this in Jesus' name. And I believe the Lord can help us. Amen. Psalms 27 teaches us something here. It says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now, you talk about a tragedy in life. That is probably one of the heaviest ones. 
is when people don't have moms and dads as role models. And most of us, we could probably think of some families that are like that, and I don't think we need to be critical, but it's the truth, isn't it? A lot of times, praise God, I can look back at my formative years, and most of what I learned was because of my mom and dad. They're the ones that taught me. And that's why those of you that have young children at home, you know, you're in an important role right now. Don't think that this is kind of a secondary role to some career. You're raising kids. And I'm going to tell you something, that's an important role. But the Scripture teaches us that even if our father and our mother forsake us, come on, we got Almighty God who won't do that, will he? Come on, aren't you glad to know that? I'll tell you, and one of the reasons that is is because of his great love, praise God. I underline this, and I want to read this to you. Jesus proved that true love, now listen to this. I think this is so important. Jesus proved that true love is an action by how he lived his life and ultimately laid down his life for our benefit. Folks, there's no greater love than that. There is no greater love. You and I can't do it any better than that. It is if we would lay down our life for somebody. And Jesus did that. He didn't just talk about it. He did it. Praise God. Now, I don't believe that God's going to have us to go to a cross and die for somebody's sins because we couldn't do that. But there's going to be a lot of times when you're going to literally have to lay down your feelings. You're going to have to lay down your wants. You're going to have to lay down what you feel like you want to do first, and you're going to have to take on the role of Jesus Christ, and you're going to have to, and I'm going to have to learn how to become more proficient in ministering to other people. I believe while we're doing that, God will never neglect us. Our needs won't go on, 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 you know, undone, praise God. A lot of times, like I told you before, God will fulfill those needs while we're ministering to others, praise God. And so this is what's important, amen. In the book, uh, there's a book out there called The Servant. And in that, in, that, in that book, I don't know if it's got this or not, but it talks about the different Greek meanings for love. Let me give you some for instances here. Amen. The, one, the word eros, E-R-O-S, it's a Greek word that, that's, that's a definition for love. And what it means is it means one of desire and strong attraction. That's what that word means. You know, you might see something in the world that you really like, and you're going, whoa, I'd like to have that, you know. And that's a lot of times, that's the lowest octane. That's an eros love. That's what that really is. And then you have, and I, I think I'm going to pronounce this right, it's called S-T-O-R-G-E, storied, I think is how it's pronounced. And what that love is, is that's a love that's expressed among family members. Amen. That's why sometimes when you have family, you kind of cut them a lot more slack than you do people in the world, don't you? Well, it's because there's a love that's bumping up. Amen. I think that's perfectly natural to do that. Amen. Now, we've got to be careful with that, you know, that we don't, you know, become hypocritical in those kind of things. But I don't think it's wrong, you know, to love your kids and love your wife and, and that type of thing, your family. That's a good thing. That's what we need to learn to do. In fact, that's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, we have family. And then the fourth type of love is that of phileo. You've heard of Philadelphia, Sister Carnahan? I missed three. No. I have, I have four of them here. I have eros, storage, and then I have phileo, and then I have agape. Yeah, I thought that's what I said, okay? But if I didn't, I apologize. Okay, phileo love is that which represents kind of a conditional convenience, brotherly love, you know? And a lot of times phileo love will come in when we build a relationship. And that relationship a lot of times is based upon, you treat me good, I'll treat you good, which is okay. I think that's, that's something that will help us to grow. But believe me, that's not the top one. The top one, and of course most of us have already heard of this, is agape love, praise God. If you want uh, a, a kind of a more thorough, um, um, uh, not demonstration, what am I thinking of? Um, my mind just went blank. Um, definition. If you want more of a thorough definition of agape love, just turn to Corinthians 4, 13, 1 Corinthians 13. 
you're going to find a pretty thorough definition of what agape love is. Now, that's a pretty high standard, folks. But I'm here to tell you, if you and I want to become role models for Jesus or, 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 or like him, we're going to have to learn to love people in the agape way. Eros love isn't going to cut it. Storage love isn't going to cut it. Phileo love is going to help, but it isn't going to cut it. What you and I have to learn is to learn to love the way God has loved. Amen. Well, the good news is the Scripture says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. How? Through the Holy Ghost. So we can learn to love like Jesus loves. You know, when I talk about the dimensions of man, I won't go into them, but there's three dimensions that God wants us to, to become more proficient in. There's a dimension of faith. There's a dimension of miracles. And then there's a dimension of love. Amen. And I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to sound negative, but I don't think we can walk in that dimension, you know, 24-7. But I believe there's times in our life when we can experience that. Amen. Can anybody raise their hand and say, I've experienced that love, that agape love. I don't know where it came from, but praise God, I had it. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's loving like God loves. There's no conditions. We don't have any strings attached. Amen. And if we really want to become a, a role model of Jesus Christ, this is where we got to begin, praise God. This is the core deal. Amen. This is what God wants to help us to do. Look at the scripture up there on, on the screen there. The scripture says, Likewise, ye younger, this is 1 Peter 5 and 5, submit yourselves unto the elder, which is a good policy. It says, Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with what? Yeah, there's one of those areas, praise God, of our lives that being a role model like Jesus will help us to do. It says, for God resisteth the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. In fact, in the book of James, along similar thoughts here, it talks about that he gives more grace to the humble. And this is what you and I need to learn, praise God. God has got all of the abilities that we need. But what we have to learn to do is we got to learn to go to him, and we got to learn to do it his way in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you something. There is no example like God, no example like the Father. Amen. And so you and I, we can begin to walk in those dimensions, and I believe that God will begin to bless, and people will begin to see that. There is a difference, praise God. I don't care what mankind can accomplish, and mankind can accomplish some pretty great things. We don't, we don't hold a candle compared to what God can do. And that's why you and I must understand that this is, this is God's design. Remember what we talked about here tonight. We know that all things together work for good, don't they? Come on. Many of us are beginning, are beginning to see that in our lives, aren't we? We're not saying that everything is going to work perfect. We just know that all things together are going to work for his good. And it's because we love God. Amen. And because we are being conformed into his image, that's what God is doing. That's why you're not wasting your time in this world, praise God. You're making good use of your time in Jesus' name, praise God. On your sheets there, our daily adornment, one of the things that we need to put on, the Bible talks about this. It talks about learn to put some things off, and then we got to learn to put some things on, you know, and I'm not just talking about clothing. I'm talking about attitudes, I'm talking about, you know, letting God begin to do something. But our daily adornment should be to wear the garments of humility. That's what Jesus did, folks. That's what he did. That's why his disciples at times had a hard time with him. You know, they knew how they would have reacted to the situation. Amen. But Jesus didn't react that way. And so the more that we can become like Jesus, the more, in my opinion, we can learn to do things the way he is. Somebody said one time that humility is the soil. Humility is the soil where grace takes root. And a lot of the things of God, literally, that's what needs to happen. You know, the example in Scripture a lot of times is referring to seed. Remember that? Jesus gave us a beautiful rendition of that in the 13th chapter of the book of um, of, of Matthew, and then again in the fourth chapter of the book of Mark, and in the eighth chapter of the book of Luke. You know, the sower went forth and sowed seed. And the seed was the same, praise God, but it had to do with the soil that that seed, you know, fell upon. And that's what we can give God permission to do. 
I don't know if you realize this or not, but God wants to put a plow a lot of times to our soil. Amen. You want to know why? Because He wants to prepare it, praise God, for the seed to fall on and so that that seed will go into that soil and begin to germinate and begin to produce fruit. Can somebody say amen to that? That's what being a role model will help you and I to do, literally. It'll help us to receive the seed, amen, because our ground, our soil is worked up by humility, and then that seed can fall into that soil, praise God, and we can begin to produce the things that God wants to do. Listen to this. The lack of humility is a sufficient explanation of every defeat or failure. Humility is not so much a virtue listed among or along with other qualities. It is the root of them. A lot of the qualities that we need need to be rooted in humility. Amen. It assumes the right attitude before God. That's what humility helps us to do. Amen. It helps us to assume the right attitude. And how many besides me have learned that a lot of times attitude is important, isn't it? Come on. And this is what God can help us to do every day. He can begin to tweak our attitudes because there's not one of us in this room tonight that we don't need attitude adjustments. Can somebody say amen? Why don't you say amen again? Because you know that this is true, praise God. We sometimes like to hide these kind of things, but attitude adjustments are needed. And, you know, I think what we can do, I don't think we're ever going to get to a place in life where we're not going to need them. That's just my opinion. But I do think we can get to a place in life where they can come a whole lot quicker. Amen. We don't have to learn three and four lessons. We can take the first lesson, and we can begin to adapt it to our lives. In fact, why don't we do this right now? we got a few minutes. Let's just raise our hands right now, and let's ask God to help us in our attitudes right now. Come on. I'm telling you, He's willing. He wants to do it. Praise God. There's no question about it. He wants to clothe us in humility. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's right. That's right. Right out of the chute, Jesus gave us a perfect example of humility. Come on, he wasn't, he wasn't born in a, in a four-story hospital. He was born in a stable. Come on, he was telling us right off the bat, praise God, that I'm not afraid of humility. Amen. That was quite an experience. And so you and I, we can understand that. And I believe that God wants to make a strong impression upon our lives that way. Amen. Somebody said one time that humility is not thinking less of yourself. What humility really is is not thinking of yourself at all. And wow, that takes a lot of practice. Amen. But God can help us with that. That's what the world needs to see, in my opinion. That's what the world needs to see. Again, we talked about this before. Let this mind be in you. Amen. That's one of the beauties of repentance. Repentance starts with the way we think. Come on, I understand it'll, it'll, sooner or later it's going to hit the actions, but the bottom line is we've got to change the way we think. And what better way to think than to think like Jesus? Come on, that's why reading those Gospels and finding out how he did things, that is a good, good subject to get on. That's a good endeavor, praise God. God wants to help us, praise God. And so we must understand, the Scripture says, who being in the form of God, he could do things, amen, but he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. This is a Scripture that you and I should become very familiar with for our own personal lives. Amen. Because reputations are things that sometimes can get in the way of us doing what God wants us to do. Come on, I know there's more than one of you out there. I've done it myself. I thought about, man, what's, what am I going to look like if I go up to this woman at the store and begin to pray for her to get healed? Come on, we've all thought of that. And what are we trying to do there? We're trying to protect our reputation, aren't we? Now listen to me, folks. I believe if we can be rooted in that love, that agape love, that praise God will go beyond anything else that we have in life, and we can allow that code of, of humility to be on, I don't believe, I believe we're going to get rid of the fear, praise God, that we're going to have of how we're going to look, and we don't care anymore because we just want to reach people. We just want to see Jesus have an impact in people's lives. I'm going to tell you, folks, that's why he kept the church on this earth. 
Amen. He told us we would become witnesses. And I understand that's against the grain, but I'm going to tell you something. We're not talking about me being the role model. We're talking about Jesus being the role model. And so this is what God wants to help us to do. Amen. And so you must understand, when we talk about Satan, when we talk about our enemy, praise God, Satan, the root nature of, ser of the serpent was pride. Amen. You read the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. We won't turn there, but you're going to find that he was created perfect. Come on, God didn't make a flaw, but for some reason he allowed pride to come into his heart. And, you know, you and I, we understand what the rest is. Amen. He's made havoc of a lot of different things. And so you and I, we can expect the same thing, praise God. So the root nature of, of, of the serpent is pride. But the root nature of, of, the, of Jesus Christ is that of humility. He never forgot, praise God, why he came. Amen. And that's why it's so important that you and I go on to maturity that we realize that, yes, thank God for saving us. How many are thankful that God came into your life, allowed you to repent, you were baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of all your sins, and then he gave you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He didn't charge you for it. You didn't have to make payments on it. I'm telling you, folks, that one is one that should get us all, praise God, thankful. But it doesn't stop there. That's where it just begins. If any person be in Christ, they're a new creature. Creature. That's what we are right now, praise God. And so we can begin to adopt these things that God puts into our life. But we've got to deal with this issue called pride, folks. We've got to deal with it. It's an attitude that you and I have to take care of. And with God's help, we can do it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Philippians 2 and 9 stipulates, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. Who's that? Jesus. And given him a name which is above every name. Praise God. You've got to understand, when Jesus went to that cross, amen, he died. He put it all on the line. But the Bible teaches us that he was raised, praise God, in that resurrection. He's, in fact, the first fruits of that resurrection. And I'm going to tell you, folks, he's got a glorified body. And guess what's going to happen to you and I if we'll follow the same tracks that he did? He's going to give us a glorified body in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, folks, I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. But right now, I got to deal with some of these issues, with these issues in life, and that's what God can help me to do. In Jesus' name, praise God. You think about it, John three and sixteen, which is probably one of the most known scriptures of the New Testament. It talks about God so loved the world. There's the motive, praise God, that He gave His only begotten Son. Somebody say, give. Amen, that whosoever believeth on him or in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's the will of the Father, praise God. That's why he gave, amen. And that's why you and I, we have the privilege in the kingdom of God to take on the same attitude. We're talking about being a role model here, folks. And I understand that's not easy in the world you and I are living in. And so, but we can achieve it in Jesus Christ. We can achieve it in his way. We can achieve it by his word, praise God. Can you say amen? I feel like there's some things sinking in here tonight. I think some of you are looking at your lives and you're seeing some areas that, praise God, they need a role model. And God's going to help you to raise to the task. I'm telling you right now, God's got confidence in you. Amen. He's going to help you to raise to the task. And it's going to get exciting, praise God. You're going to see some cool things happen. Now, we are instructed to let the mind of Christ be in us. That's what that, that uh, Philippians 2 is really telling us to do. And you've got to understand that three-letter word. Sometimes we miss this. You know, we want God to make us think like him. See, that's what we want to do. But the Scripture says let which means you got to have a part in this too. See, you and I have got to allow it to happen, praise God. That's why the aspect of the free will has not left, you know, our world. Amen. God's not in, in the business of creating robots or programs or things that people will do, you know, that type of way. God wants us to do it out of our own volition, out of our own free will. I'm going to tell you something, folks. When we begin to see that, I'm going to tell you, we're going to take care of some things, and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Praise God. The Bible says, this is what it says in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. 
Paul made reference to this. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Think about that. You remember when he was given his discipleship and invitation? Remember that? What did he say they needed to do? He said, if you want to become my disciple, what were the three areas? Come on, what was the first one? Deny yourself. Amen. Pick up and, yeah, there it is. Amen. Now, we understand that cross that we're picking up is not a redemptive cross. It's not, folks. You and I can't redeem anybody by the blood that we shed. But what it is, in my opinion, it's a submissive cross that we begin to allow ourselves to be crucified with Christ in true submission. That God, no matter what the rest of the world is doing, no matter how they do it, whatever the trends are, you know, we're going to do it the way God wants us to do it. Now, listen to me. That takes a lot of work and dedication and consecration. That's just the nature of it, praise God. That's why I tell people all the time, and I don't mean this derogatory, that Christianity is the hardest thing I've ever done. It is. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. It's going to be worth it. Because the Scripture says, when I see him, amen, I'm going to be like him. Amen. And I'm going to be able to handle it. Come on, that's the beauty of it, praise God, is that we are going to have the flow of the Spirit through us in that, in that kind of a measure. And we're going to be able to handle it, praise God. That's the beauty of this. That's why we want to choose His model, praise God. Bible says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. There it is, my friends. I want people to see Jesus. Amen. And it says, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You got to understand, Jesus became the Son of God by the things which he suffered. Amen. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Jesus is our prime example. That's why if we want to be a role model, let's be a, real, a role model like Jesus. Amen. I think it's something that God wants to help each and every one of us to begin to work on every day. That's a goal that God wants to put, praise God. And so having the mind of Christ, praise God, will change a lot of different things. Amen. Somebody said one time that ministry that costs you nothing and this is a world we're living in. People want free lunches. People want free everything. But ministry that costs you nothing isn't going to accomplish anything. It just isn't going to. And so this is what God gives us a part in. He allows us, amen, to lay down our lives for him every day. He allows us to think the way he wants us to think. And believe me, folks, this is, what's going to, this is what's going to accomplish the things that really need to be accomplished. Amen, is when we begin to count the cost. You know, a good chapter in the Bible, if you want to read this for yourself, is the chapter in the 14th chapter of the book of Luke. Jesus asked that. He said, what, what, what person begins to build a building and doesn't first of all get the pen and the pencil out and the pad and say, what's this going to cost me? And you want to know why that's important? It's very simple. Because the project needs to get finished. See, this is the thing that God is doing in our lives right now. His intention, his ambition is to finish the project. And that's why you and I got to lose the thinking that, well, this is too hard. No, you might have to sit down. You might have to take a rest. You might have to gather some grace up. But it's not too hard because God wouldn't have put it in your life if it was. Amen. That's what he's doing, my friends. And so we must understand that God expects us. He expects us to understand the cost because it's a high thing to accomplish in Jesus' name. Praise God. Scripture teaches us in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. And, if, and it says, and be kind one to another. That makes sense, doesn't it? It says tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. Amen. One of the major, major accomplishments, praise God, I, uh, if I can say it that way, in the role model of Jesus Christ is in the fact that he forgave. I can't imagine the pain that Jesus was going through. I can't, folks. It had to be excruciating. On that cross, I mean, bleeding, 
I, I've, I've read doctors' accounts of it, but it, 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 there's just, it's amazing to me. But the idea of it is while he was on that cross, he spoke words like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. He spoke words like, today you're going to be with me in paradise. See, Jesus was able to go through things like that. Amen. You know, to put it down in my perspective, the seventh chapter of the book of Acts is one of those long chapters. And a guy that I'm kind of partial to was doing the preaching. His name was Stephen, and that's my name, okay? So if I'm long-winded, it's because I'm a Stephen, okay? But he gave them a huge Bible study. Study it for yourself. He began to show them and, and help them to understand that all the way through the Old Testament, God had a plan, and he was dealing with them. But when he got to the end of his message, for some reason, he began to preach pretty hard to them. And the reason that was is because their hearts became hardened. Amen. That is a sad thing, and we have to be careful with that. Many of us probably have already encountered people that at this particular time had a hard heart. Well, what I try to remind myself is maybe someday it won't be. Amen. That's what I try to tell myself. Point I'm making is that those people got mad at Stephen. Amen. That's why I don't want to be totally like Stephen, okay? But the Bible says they begin to pick up rocks, and they begin to throw them at him. Now, listen to me, folks. I know the cross had to be hard. But, man, that had to be hard, too. But the Scripture tells us that Stephen didn't go out of this life, you know, accusing people and getting mad at people. The Scripture says that he actually said something. He said, Lord, he said, don't even charge this to them. I'm telling you, folks, that's a role model. And I got to believe because the guy was holding the coats. He was, he was condoning the action, but he didn't do it. And the guy's name was Saul. But we understand, and it doesn't say it in Scripture, but I got to believe that that role model made an impression upon him. How many can recall something like that? I'm not talking about somebody getting stoned, but somebody putting up with something and doing something, and you got to looking at that and saying, wow, that is something. How many can, can think of an experience like that? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't that make a, a, a lasting impression? Well, now you understand and got it figured out what God wants you to become in this world. He wants you to become a lasting impression. Amen. And so the Scripture says that we can be kind, we can be tender-hearted, And boy, believe me, that one takes work. It does. Amen. Because the Scripture tells us, Jesus told us in the last days, because the love of many would wax cold. Amen. Hearts would become hardened. And so you and I must guard against that. That's why we must find ourselves in the love of God. Jude tells us that. Praying in the Spirit. Find ourselves in the love of God. And we can in Jesus' name. You were in there. Love of God was in that prayer room, wasn't it? Yeah. I have never. It's, I don't go in there any time now, and I don't feel the love of God. I'm telling you, you can find the love of God. Praise God. It's evident in Jesus' name. Mark 4 and 24 says, And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you met, it's just talking about a, one is the verb and the other is the noun. Actually, is what it is. It shall be measured to you. Think about that. God gives us kind of a blank check. With what measure you met, that's what it's going to be measured out to you. That's why the Scripture says, blessed are the merciful. What does it say after that? For they shall obtain mercy. Come on, I'm here to tell you, God gives us a good way to start. And so a lot of times, that's what I'm talking about, ministry. We make mistakes. We screw up. Sometimes we feel horrible about it. But God puts somebody in our life that we can talk to about God. And all of a sudden, we're extending the mercy of God to their lives. And all of a sudden, we feel God's mercy come into our lives. See, that's what I'm talking about. God gives us a means in which we can receive it. And that's why we must learn whatever God gives to us. We need to learn how to give it out. And that's what will help us to become more proficient and to receive more. Because the Bible says he gives more grace to the humble. And so these are the things that God can help us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. James 1 and 17 says every good work. Everybody say every. 
every good work or a good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. What that means is God's stuff doesn't have, you know, uh, uh, good days and bad days. It works just like it does every day in Jesus' name. And that's what you and I, we can understand, praise God, is that God has given to us. He gives us gifts, folks. Amen. And what the gift is supposed to be a reflection of is the giver. Amen. And that's why when we get gifts, we can minister the way God wants us to, to minister in Jesus' name. Romans 13 and 12 talks about the fact that the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. That's what you and I literally have to do. Just like we put our clothes on in the morning when we get out of bed. We got to learn to put on the virtues of God. We got to learn to say, God help my attitude to be in a good place the way it needs to be. I know it's a tough job, folks. I know sometimes it can seem relentless. I understand all of that. I'm in the foxhole with you. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. There is no better life than to imitate, imitate Jesus. Come on. There are times when I feel closer to God than others. And I'm going to tell you something. When I imitate Jesus, that's when I really feel close to him. And so you can get the same thing. You can do the same thing in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let me just remind us, Mark chapter number 10 tells us, For even the Son of Man, praise God, came not to minister unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. I made reference to this in closing. I'm closing now. The 13th chapter of the book of John gives us a side of Jesus that none of the other gospels give us. They don't mention the, the foot washing in any of the other Gospels. But another thing that, that, that is not mentioned there that I think is true humility is that Jesus purposely, purposely knelt before Judas, knowing exactly, come on, you've got to understand, the spirit that was in him was that of Almighty God. He knew exactly what Judas was going to do. But Jesus didn't allow it to be any variance. I believe with the same love that he washed Peter's feet, he washed Judas's feet. I don't know about you folks, but I want to be like that. I don't want to have to fake it when I stand in front of somebody I really don't like. I want the love of God to be able to come into my life, and I want to be able to minister with no respecter of persons. And I understand that isn't going to happen because I want it. It's going to happen because of Almighty God. I don't know about you, but to all of us probably have people in our lives that God isn't going to take out of our lives. It's not going to, God isn't going to give you all people that love you to death. He's going to allow people that are going to challenge you. But God wants you to become the role model to everybody in Jesus' name. Can you stand with me tonight? And can we offer up a prayer, praise God, and ask the Lord to help us? I believe he will. I believe he already has. I believe that God has given us all kinds of things that we can begin to work on. But, you know, let this mind. we got to let it happen, folks. We can't just wish it. we got to say, God, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to work on this right here tonight in Jesus' name. Would you just close your eyes and lift both of those hands and offer up a prayer for him right now? Put it in your words. Jesus, I thank you for opportunities. There's no question about it, Lord God, being a Christian will present more and more opportunities every day. And, Lord God, I want to be more like you. I, it's not wishful thinking, Lord. That is a desire. I have a desire in my heart, Lord God, to become more like you. And I know that's possible. But, Lord God, I need your help. I need your help, your hand. I need to cast my burdens upon you so that you can put yours in, in me in Jesus' name. Strengthen this body of Christians here tonight, Lord God. Help us to take on the role model of being a Christian the way you want us to, Lord God. Everywhere we go, help us, Lord Jesus, to do this. And I give you the praise and I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Can we thank God together right now? Thank him for his grace. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Thank you, Jesus, for an opportunity. God bless you, folks. Thanks for coming to church. Don't forget our services on Sunday. The Lord bless you, folks, in Jesus' name. God bless you.